Hello, hello, Danger Noodles. It is I, the the great Dr. Bright with uh Hatchet Head 33. Hi. <laughs> anyway, I should now read this. Content warning. Mother's Favorite is a psychological horror game not suitable for younger audiences. This game contains dramatized depictions of self-harm, mental and physical abuse, intense gore, and medical violence. This game contains minimal flashing light effects and mild visual and auditory jump scares. I understand and I want to continue. Alright. Oh, that's kind of cool. The, the, the t title screen thing moves. I want to move my mouse. Guessing since this is a demo, there's no Twitch category. Oh, no, yeah, no, there's no Twitch category, sadly. I already checked. Anyways, are you ready to start? I mean, yeah. Three, two, one. I have Ricola and water nearby. Oh, wait, hold on. And thus, this was my stream now. For I have eliminated Bright. My first decision Shut as the, the owner up. of... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I've started dreaming again. In my dreams, I feel safe. Safe from everything waiting for me when I wake up. I can't remember the last time I had a dream like this. My memory has gotten so bad, it could have been weeks, months, or maybe even years since the last one. Although that brings me comfort, I know that I shouldn't be having these dreams. Medical reports say that most patients start started having vivid dreams and hallucinations right before the virus entered its final stage. Oh, hey, Ra hey, Ra Rapids, how's it hanging? In the chat. Hmm. Less than a month later, every single case resulted in death. I think tomorrow is going to be my last birthday. Mother says I should be grateful since most infected individuals would have given anything to live half as long as I have. 18 years doesn't exactly feel like much of an accomplishment. There we go. I was born here. Aboard the quarantine station 388-SR. This place is devoid of other patients and the staff is fully automated. I have lived my whole life without seeing another person like me. Mother says that this station was built to house over 3,000 people, offering round-the-clock hospice care with a cure until a cure could be found. This place was supposed to be a sanctuary for those awaiting a brighter future. But everyone else is dead now. I'm all that's left. While I still have time, I keep dream- God damn it. <laughs> I, I hit my tongue twisted. Alright, let me try it again. While I still have time, I keep dreaming about my lake. I don't know how many times I had this exact dream, but I never get tired of it. Everything about it feels so real, from the warm sun on my skin to a soft sand in between my toes. I can feel a gentle breeze caressing my face, and I can hear the rustling of leaves all around me. I open my eyes, and I see it, and I can see it, the only thing in the whole universe I deem worthy of the world perfect. In my dreams, I am standing on the shore of a vast lake. The water is dark and deep, reflecting the golden rays coming from the setting sun peeking just over the distant tree line. I 
I am hip hypnotized by the noise each crashing wave creates, lost in a chaotic wall of white noise. It drowns out all the awful thoughts that normally buzz around in my brain. There are no claustrophobic rooms, no blinking lights, and no rattling old air filters. In every direction, the world sprawls infinitely, a canvas of hazy colors ablaze in the sun. In my dreams, I am free. Eventually, I am going to have to wake up. I'll go back to the biting metallic cold that permeates deep into my bones, where it settles into my blood like a poison. Sometimes when I'm feeling brave, I pretend that this isn't just a dream. I entertain the idea that this might actually be a memory. It's dangerous to pretend like that, not when it comes to my own memories. My sickness comes along with a long list of horrible symptoms. Fatigue, nausea, migraines, anemia, seizures, frequent bruising, and bleeding. But worst of all is the memory loss. Each day, I can feel it getting worse. I can still remember the big things. Important stuff like my name, my birthday, my favorite color. My name is Fourth. My birthday is tomorrow. My favorite color is orange. That stuff is easy. What hurts the most is all the little things I don't even realize I am forgetting. I lay on my bed and struggle to remember what happened a year ago, a month ago, sometimes even what happened just the day before. Every night it feels like there is a tiny hole in the back of my head and everything that makes me human is dripping out onto the floor. One drop might not even seem like the end of the universe, but some nights I swear I can feel the empty echoing space inside my skull where a person used to be. I don't want the dream to end. I don't want to wake up for another day on this stupid station. I don't want to smile like a good little girl and act like nothing has gone horribly wrong with my family. What? What do I want? I could always say that I don't want to die, but I know that isn't an option anymore. The sickness is getting worse. My dreams are proof of that. The one thing I want more than anything else in the universe is to see my lake once before I lose myself entirely. It doesn't have to be the exact same lake in my dream. I don't even think that lake truly exists. It's just a collection of images I've seen in drawings and photos. But somewhere out there in the vastness of space is a lake. A place where I can let myself fade away and die happy. I'm going to find I'm going to find my lake and I'm going to get off this station. My dream starts to fade and I brace myself for what have comes next. The first of three morning alarms goes off, so I rub the sleep from my eyes and get out of bed. In the dark, I change out of my pajamas and put them down the dirty clothes shoot. By the time I come back to my room, my pajamas will be waiting for me, clean and ready to wear again. I open my closet and pull out the only outfit I am permitted to wear, a large fluffy dress with a bottom-up blouse and long flowing shawl to wrap around my arms. I'm sorry, right. Yeah. You just said a bottom-up blouse. What, what, what did it say? Button-up. God damn it, I'm sorry. Bottom-up blouse. I'm sorry, Ray Rapids, for saying that. I'm sorry. Yeah, fair warning. Uh, Bright fucks up words a lot. Sometimes, <laughs> not a lot. Fuck you. <laughs>
It's literally the most consistent joke about your channel. Shush. That isn't <laughs> you saying genitalia. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyways. <laughs> Back to reading. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, just ignore... Ignore the fucking elephant in the room. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. No matter how dirty or damaged my outfit gets during the day, it reappears in my closet each morning, cleaned and fully repaired. I actually started ripping up my dress on purpose to get my hands on any fabric or thread I might need later. It proved very useful for making my own bandages, especially whenever mother refuses to treat my wounds. My hand instinctively goes to my right shoulder. The muscle is still sore from what happened last time. The injury happened over a week ago, but the pain is still fresh in my mind. I've read the manuals for each of the other caretakers. I read the manuals for each of the other caretakers. Directly harming a patient is supposed to be forbidden. But I guess mother doesn't have to listen to those rules anymore. The next step in my morning routine is to take my weight and vitals. I step onto a small metal dais. It's that's dais, right? Metal dais? I'm not familiar with that word. I'm Well, I, I guess it is. Hmm. Anyways. I step onto the middle, a small metal dais and place my hands on, this, on a round metal device. A small beep lets me know the scan is complete. After that, I head to the bathroom. A second alarm goes off, warning me that I only have a few minutes until little brother comes to collect me. The lights switch on and I am able to see my own face in the bathroom mirror. I just realized something. What? Do you think it's a, a, a problem that my box is covering up the text in a visual novel? Like, granted, it's all getting read, read anyway. I am above you now. <laughs> You're my hat. I, I don't like that. <laughs> I quickly brush my teeth and wash my face in the sink. I take some time to look into the mirror at the sad, tired stranger who looks back at me. I take a deep breath and practice one of the many fake smiles I will have to wear today. Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? I clear my throat and try again, more sincerely this time. Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? That should be good enough. No matter how I am feeling inside, my behavior has to remain as polite as possible. This is exhausting. I risk pulling up my sleeves to look at the ugly bruise on my shoulder, a grim reminder of why I can't let my emotions show again. Mother doesn't like it when I... The third alarm goes off, startling, startling me out of my thoughts. I can already hear little brother calling to me from outside my bedroom door. You want to be little brother? What voice should I give little brother? Well, I'm assuming the robotic by the, the type of font. Hmm. Oh yeah, they kind of would be robotic because she says she was the only human left. Yeah, all automated. So. Oh, fourth. 
My darling sister, guess what time it is. I'll be right there, little brother. My voice is already shaky. I know little brother won't hurt me, but that doesn't mean I can't let my guard down around him. I walk to the front door and straighten out my dress. I take in one last deep breath right as the door hisses open. A large blue robot dashes into the room, his spindly arms flailing about to keep his balance. Good morning to my incredible sister forth. It is me, your favorite little brother. Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? I am very peachy. Now that I get to see you, Forth, are you ready for another fun-filled day of safe recreational activities? My smile feels a little less forced whenever I talk to little brother. His enthusiasm might f feel a little fake, but he doesn't seem to know any other way to act. The tiny plague on the back of his head. Oh wait, that's not. What? <laughs> the tiny plague. <laughs> There's just a small little outbreak of the bubonic plague on the back of his head. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> uh. The tiny plaque on the back of his head tells me that he is a G7 long-term medical care companion union. 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 <laughs> G7 long term medical care companion unit. His specific model is designed for infant and child entertainment and enrichment. He is the entire union. Oh my god. <laughs> His job is to watch over me during the day and report any changes to, in my health to mother. I have to watch what I say around him, just in case. Of course, little brother. I am ready when you are. Rebus, <laughs> oh god, the robots have unionized. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's an interesting thought. <laughs> we we get to the hell stage of capitalism where everyone is being replaced by robots and nothing actually <laughs> being put in place to help them, and then the robots get smart enough to unionize also. <laughs> so the one percent is up the same creek without a path. Oh no. <laughs> it's just this time it's with non human workers. <laughs> Oh boy, this is going to be a great day, just like yesterday, and just like tomorrow. Well, not exactly like tomorrow, right? I'm sorry, Forth. I did not understand what you just said. Please clarify your statement. Tomorrow is my birthday. I thought we were, were going to have a party, like we always do. Now I understand. Of course we are going to do something special for your birthday. Exactly 17 years, 364 days, 6 hours, and 10 minutes ago, I got introduced to the best little sister in the whole wide universe. Wait, best little sister? Wait. <laughs> That's a bit different. Is is that is that a slip up or intentional? Best little sister in the whole wide universe. I will never forget how small and loud you were. <laughs> you are much larger and much quieter now. I am so proud of you. Uh, uh, thank you for the compliment? 
You are very welcome, my darling little fourth. Oh, that's me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that was intentional. Ah, okay. Have, have you ever found it odd that you're technically older than me, but we still call you little brother? Oh, fourth. You are so silly. Even if I am older than you, I will always be your fun and lovable little brother. Oh, I see. We better get moving before Auntie starts to wonder what is taking us so long. With that, little brother zooms out of my room and down the hallway towards the kitchen. I try to mimic his enthusiasm and follow after him. The floors of the space station are always cold and it bites at the soles of my feet as we walk. There are no windows in any of the rooms I'm permitted to explore and the flickering lights overhead turn everything a washed out shade of blue. Each hallway is, I is an ident identical gray me metal tube. Every room is the same little claustrophobic box. Nothing ever changes here. Nothing except me. In my mind, the lake is always moving. The clashing waves, the swaying trees, and the billowing clouds. It, is all, it all breathes in a way that the station never could. For a moment, I start to close my eyes. My lake slowly comes into focus through the dark. Fourth, are you listening? I just asked you a question. What? Oh, I just... My heart rate picks up as a hint of panic crawls up my throat. During my little daydream, I completely missed what little brother had just said. I was just thinking about... Well, I was just... Is something the matter, my dear fourth? Are you speaking? Or you are speaking in an unorthodox manner. Should I tell him about my dreams? Anything I tell little brother might end up in his next report to mother. Maybe I should just stay quiet about this. Oh, we got our first choice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Oh, thank the gods that actually lets you save. <laughs> choice. Okay. Tell a little brother about my dream or keep it to myself. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my god, Squidward. <laughs> SpongeBob, I've come for your pickle. <laughs> what the fuck? Hmm. Hmm. I kinda wanna I kinda wanna tell it to little robot man. But also no. So whatever you want to do. Hey, little brother, can I tell you about something? Sure thing, Forth. As long as it does not interfere with our morning schedule, you are allowed to ask me anything within reason. Reasonable parameters. I swallow my fear and take a deep breath. Last night, I had a dream. Little brother doesn't say anything. And, uh, I just haven't had any dreams in such a long time. I was hoping that it wasn't a sign of anything worse. Oh, fourth, this is totally normal. Your current medications can limit dreaming, but not suppress it completely. I see nothing unusual about this development. Oh, so that's a good thing, right? 
Not good or bad, just neutral. Okay. Be sure to log any- Yeah. Thanks. Recently, it feels like I- So even a small bit of honesty like this is worth appreciating. We keep walking until we reach the door to the kitchen. Enjoy your breakfast, my darling baby sister. I will be right outside the door if you need anything. Thank you, little brother. With that, little brother steps into his charging station next to the door and goes silent. The hallway suddenly feels very empty without little brother's cheerful beeping. I straighten out my dress and walk into the kitchen. As soon as I walk through the door, I am hit with the smell of cold wet vegetables and fresh blood. I didn't have time to properly prepare myself, and I have to resist gagging a little. Even now, Auntie calls her this room her kitchen. Not a lot of cooking actually happens in here. The pots and pans hanging on the wall have never been used, and all the big industrial stove tops don't have any power. In fact, the only thing that works in here is the gigantic sink, and only for drinking water. Auntie's food synthesizers do all the cooking, so this room has always felt a little redundant to me. There are two doors in the kitchen. One leads back to the hallway I just came from. The other leads towards the atrium and Big Sister's side of the station. A large chute in the middle of the dining table slides open, and with a series of excited beats, Auntie flies into the room. How, sh how should auntie be voiced do you want to voice auntie or i think i want to voice mother so you can voice auntie okay <laughs> welcome back afar uh i hope you have been a good girl and properly <laughs> <laughs> The You're wording good. just broke me. <laughs> <laughs> and properly digested everything I served you yesterday. Yes, Auntie. I am ready for another delicious meal with you. Oh, Forth. You know just what to say to make this old robot feel brand new. I will take extra care to make sure this next meal is especially nutritious just for you. I mean, I was going to make your breakfast nutritious anyway, but we can both pretend that this particular meal is a little more special than normal. No harm in that, right? Thank you, Auntie. I can't wait. While I might not be too thrilled about her cooking, I can't bring myself to hate Auntie. Her programming seems to be a sim little simpler than my other caretakers, and that makes her feel just a bit more honest. Model 62-6F Food Processor. She knows how to make food healthy. But that's about it. I sit down on one of the stools in front of the table. I adjust my dress so the back of my calves don't touch the cold metal legs. Alright, Forth. I have... Oh, why not I fuck... <laughs> have a look at our menu and tell me what sounds particularly nutritious to you. 
take your time. I mean, you only have 14 minutes and 11 seconds left until breakfast is over, but that is not something I am too concerned about. You have always such a reliable eater. A small digital screen appears in front of Auntie's food synthesizers. That's giving me some rather unappetizing options. It doesn't really matter what I pick. I'll just have to eat one of the other options for my lunch later today. Plain yogurt, boiled sweet potato, and sardine paste. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't like that. Well, uh, since I'm Irish, I'm taking the potato. Well, you can save that for lunch. What? I'm I'm Irish. I always eat potatoes for breakfast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. I'll go with the boiled sweet potatoes. I think there was a missing fourth thing to clarify that was fourth dialogue. Absolutely fourth coming right up. As her food synthesizer powers up, Auntie emits a cheerful little giggle. I can't help but smile and hum along to the familiar tune. Oh my Jingle. god! <laughs> she about to commit an Irish hate crime. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they get the Irish seal of approval from me. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> There's a shutter, followed by an unsettling rattling noise from inside Auntie's food synthesizer. Everything alright, Auntie? No worries. I am just mixing in some... You're good? Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, re I read ahead. Uh, I am just mixing in some vitamin paste to keep it part of this balanced breakfast. Sounds delicious. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, that really looks appetizing. Uh, <laughs> why is it green? <laughs> Don't worry about it. With a loud squishing noise, a neon green sludge emerges from her synthesizer. It smells like sweaty clothes and drips over the side of the plate where it splatters all over the floor. Uh, I don't think sweet potatoes are usually so... green. Yeah, that one is on me. I think I added too many leaves in with the sweet potato roots. You just... You just <laughs> pluck the plant. Everything together. Yeah. And you just shove it in. Yep. <laughs> uh. Delicious. <laughs> uh. I, don't, I don't like this. Deal with it. <laughs> Do not worry, <laughs> it's still edible. Yeah, you can still eat it, Hatchet. <laughs> Did you know if you try hard enough, shoe leather is edible? All that right, doesn't then. mean I want to eat it. Alright, that means I'm going to go eat it later. <laughs> you do that, right? <laughs> Anyways. Her other arm transforms into a spoon and floats over for me to use. I try to maintain a smile as I take my first bite. It tastes more like leaves than it does sweet potatoes. The texture is stringy and the fibers are very hard to chew through. I think I can even taste a few pieces of dirt that grind against my teeth. Oh. Oh, gosh. I hate that sensation. <laughs> Oh, 
This is very... Earthy. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, Forrest. I can always count on you to appreciate my cookie. I can't wait to see the next meal. <laughs> I hope... I don't see how you could fuck up plain yogurt. Right? <laughs> I mean, sardine paste is just a fuck up on its own. But like, That's what we're getting next. Plain... No. No. <laughs> get the plain yogurt. <laughs> Do not get the sardine paste. <laughs> Don't test on <Monty>. tea. <laughs> you, you, you fucking start to eat the yogurt and you find a toenail in it or some shit. Oh, God. <laughs> That's where all the human bodies went. It's, it's inside the plain yogurt. <laughs> 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 body body yogurt oh god yeah, anyways flesh flavored yogurt <laughs> uh. well respected among our cannibal uh, cannibals <laughs> well respected among our cannibalistic cannibals yes N 9 out of 10 cannibals uh, recommend this product Nine out of ten of our on-hand cannibals <laughs> recommend the cannibal yogurt. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get back to read it. I just couldn't stop with that fucking flesh yogurt jokes. I, they just kept flooding into my mind. Oh, but, but yeah, this game so far is actually pretty fun. I actually really do like the designs and stuff. I've been enjoying the art style, yeah. I hurry and eat the rest of my breakfast in silence. When it's finally done... Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> when it's finally gone, Auntie's food synthesizer begins to clean itself. Little jets of soapy water shoot out and wipe down the plate. Wait, now I'm starting to wonder, where does the food come out of? Because if it's on the plate thing, I, that's fine. But if it's on the little, I well, I would thing. imagine it. Oh. I would imagine it comes out of like the little uh, hole in the plate thing. I hope. Yeah, probably. I'm I, I'm thinking something stupid. <sighs> <sighs> How was your breakfast, or? <laughs> Adequate. <laughs> that is a to <laughs> that is a totally acceptable reaction. That breakfast should provide the exact amount of calories you need until lunchtime, and not a teaspoon more. Yeah. <laughs> You have fun digest, and I'll see you in exactly four hours and forty-five minutes. <laughs> you have fun digesting. Yeah. I I love that statement. It's amazing. <laughs> I want to say that like next time I go out with someone. I'm gonna say, oh. after we're done, you have fun digesting and then leave. <laughs> I'm suddenly struck by the fact that I'm actually happy I don't live anywhere near you. <laughs> but yeah, I really love that. Love the characters. They're 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 funny. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. yeah. With that, Auntie floats down into her metal chute and disappears. Apparently, Auntie tends to, to, to some, Auntie tends to some sort of greenhouse beneath the kitchen, but I've never seen it. All of the food I eat is produced on the lower level. I've always wanted to know what it looks like. 
Maybe it's like a tiny farm with all the vegetables growing in cute little rows. I've seen pictures of farms in my books. Auntie also grows a lot of meat for me. So she must have some sort of hatchery for all the, the fish she forces me to eat. How do we know it's fish? <laughs> right. What do you think is the key ingredient in sardine paste? Well, I mean, a bunch of people were on the ship. Where did they go? Well, yeah, but they're... They're <laughs> presumably not in the sardine paste. I, I hope. <laughs> Imagine that. Live your entire <laughs> life, ha have to deal with this awful sickness, end up in a quarantine, just so that you can be turned into sardine paste. <laughs> That's gone on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? I said it's going on my gravestone instead of my name, just sardine paste. <laughs> but anyways. Moving on. Yeah, I'm sorry, I get sidetracked sometimes, Ray Rapids. I'm sorry. We are we both are very ADHD. Yes. <laughs> I have a few minutes left until little brother comes to fetch me. After breakfast, he'll take me to the playroom for the next few hours. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> yeah, plus let's just be entirely frank, Bright. Yeah. Uh the this element of our con of our of these streams when we're together, that's what makes this transformative. Yeah. So I think it's a plus. True. I washed a horrible taste out of my mouth by drinking directly from the sink faucet. All the water in the, s in the station is recycled, so it has a strange metallic taste that I have always hated. Uh, like mall water. Hmm. Mall fountain water. Hmm. Oh yeah. Speaking of uh, fountain water, I, my school, it, it has never, I don't think it's ever been explained, but for some reason the fountain water had a sweet taste to it, like sugary sweet taste. That's really odd. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so I would, <laughs> so, since all my classes are really close to each other and we had seven minutes to get to class to class... I would just stop and drink some water and then go to class each time. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a healthy habit. Yeah. Staying hydrated. I'm pretty sure, like, maybe someone in the school added, like, sugar or something to the water. <laughs> just adds a whole bunch of fucking Splenda <laughs> to the water. Yeah. Up oh, here you go. Fourth, dear, are you ready to go? Be right there, little brother. <laughs> I take one last gulp of water before I go. It's time for little brother to escort me to our next activity. Here we are, fourth, my favorite place in the whole station. Oh boy, I cannot wait to see what sort of safe and enjoyable <laughs> activities you choose today. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I, I like watch Mark play from time to time. But I get a vibe that this room looks similar to a room in Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Like with the robot oh. here and the robot there. Oh uh, no. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the inspiration or anything. I, I just... It looks similar to me. <laughs> to me, it could me just being stupid. I mean, let's just be entirely frank. It's... It's it's a symmetrical room. Yeah. Kind of like open stuff on the sides. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to feel like... There, there's like a million rooms in games that look similar to this. Yeah. Fair. But anyway. 
I can't share little brother's enthusiasm for the playroom anymore. I might have liked this room at some point in the past, but now I feel just a little too big for all of this. The chairs in here are built for a toddler, so I have to hug my knees to my chest to fit. The walls are padded and the tables are made of rubber with rounded corners. Well, I mean, with my height, I'll usually fit in them. I uh, fit in the chairs and everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I myself made a short joke myself. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> Large screens hang high up on the walls, displaying fun math and science facts, along with cartoony images of the station that play on a loop. Yeah, I can't wait either. Your voice for fourth is absurdly inconsistent. I'm trying, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shush. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but... Yeah. I'll, I'll try and fix it right when we do the full game. Yeah. I am glad that you agree. Would you like to play catch with me? Or have some quiet drawing time? About that. What is wrong, Fourth? Don't you think that I'm too old for all these toys and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh. perfect, Ray Rapids. <laughs> I picked up one of the plastic cars little brother built and rolled it around in my hand. The plastic is so soft that I can leave dents on its surface just by squeezing it. I do not understand what you just said. These toys are perfectly suited for a human child between the ages of four and seven. Seventeen years. Well, tomorrow I'll be eighteen, so maybe we can do something different? You bring up a very good point, Forth. Tomorrow you will indeed be eighteen years old, and I will have to draft new activities suited for your age. But for today, we will still, s still, we, oh, we are still, I missed that. You are still within the acceptable age bracket that we will spend one last day enjoying ourselves. I can't wait one more day. I was hoping that little brother might allow me to decide my own activities in the future. I might be able to trick him into giving me more privileges. If I can leave the playroom, or better yet, explore without a chaperone, I might find something to help me escape. The best I can do right now is play along. I have a feeling that not, that not a lot of scheming is going to get done this morning. I could play catch with little brother, maybe use the game as an excuse to go out with, into the hall. It would be easy to turn playtime into a chance for exploration. Or I could use my drawing time to plan ahead. Writing things down helps me remember them better, and I have some ideas I want to put onto paper. Oh... Mm. So are we play catch, or are we making spy plan? Yeah. The only question is: is can little brother's arm stretch? Mm. 
Because if they can stretch, like if we try to throw it over them to go, make them go farther, they could just stretch it up and catch it high in the air. So that leaves a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I would. I in in my brain, I would just want to draw. Fair, but, same. <laughs> yeah. That's whatever you want to do. I think I like to stay here and draw f for a bit on my own. You got it. I will print out some paper for you right away. The table in front of me makes a whirring, a whirring noise, and a few sheets of paper appear from a small black slit on the side. I used to get normal paper, but I got a paper cut once, so little brother switched to soft canvas paper after that. It's yellowed and a bit harder to draw on, but it's not like I have any other options. Little brother unlocks one of the cabinets and hands me a large box of wax crayons. Enjoy your quiet drawing time. I will be right outside the door if you need anything. The door closes behind him and I can hear The door closes behind him and I hear the heavy locks sliding back into place. I can't leave, but at least I can have some time to myself. I grab a crayon and begin drawing a map of the station. I draw all the rooms I can remember in green, then trace hallways in blue. For the rooms and halls I don't have access to, I draw a red X. Pretty soon my entire map is covered in red marks, so is this really my whole world? Just a handful of rooms and some long, empty hallways. The station is supposed to be huge, acting as a home for thousands of potential patients. There has to be a door somewhere that leads to the rest of the station that I just haven't found yet. My head starts to buzz the longer I stare at this pathetic little map. I fold up the paper and stuff it into my dress. The big fluffy material in my, of my dress is perfect for hiding anything I want to smuggle back to my room. The map should be safe and secure. I can check my map whenever I want, even if it just shows a bunch of dead ends. Okay, so that's actually useful. Okay. There isn't much else for me to do, so I'll start doodling to pass the time. At first, all I can draw is a picture of my own sad face. Once I get bored of that, I start making some sketches of little brother, auntie, and big sister. I make sure to label each one with, with today's date, and I write a few notes about how I'm feeling on the back. It's important to write my thoughts down since my memory has gotten so bad recently. Mm. I start to drift back to my dream and without realizing it, I start drawing my lake. My boredom starts to lift as I lose myself in the details. I mix oranges and yellows to get the sun's reflection on the water just right. I flick the dark green trees with bits of white to add, add a little pine needles, and I fill the sky with creamy reds and purples. A smile grows on my face as I hold the drawing out in front of me. This is the closest I'll ever get to a photograph of my leg. I put my drawing over, and as today's date, I write down, Last night, I dreamed about my leg again. I'll be there for a real one day. One day. My smile fades a little and when I realize just how wishfully it feels warm against my skin. I take one last deep breath of the imaginary lake air. The stale smell of dust and old crayons brings me back to reality. With nothing left to do, 
I sit on the floor and hurl my crayons at the wall, one after another. Sounds like something I did in kindergarten, to be honest. Yeah, I can picture that. <laughs> when they hit the wall, they don't break. They just splatter and, and stick like a big, wide snot. I pick up my toys and hurl them as well. The blue truck splatters against the wall, and two of its wheels go rolling in opposite directions. Now, just how mad is little brother going to be? <laughs> Ladders? I don't think that's normal. What am I saying? Nothing here is normal. Especially me. It doesn't matter how many toys I break. Little brother just synthesized new ones each morning. I think he uses this, the same recycled material that auntie uses for some of her food. Oh, so the uh -huh. toys are edible. Uh -huh. Or they're not, and that makes it worse. Once, when I was bored enough, I tried eating the crayons, and they tasted remarkably like Auntie's pasta noodles. I sometimes <laughs> steal a few crayons just in case I get hungry at night. So, yeah, they are edible. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite activity is eating crayons. <laughs> Since it's the last day I'll ever use these, I kick the stupid little baby chairs over and over until they snap in half. I can see that they are made of the same synthesized material on the inside. Maybe this will motivate little brother to make a chair that actually fits me. This childish act of destruction actually makes me feel a little better. Which is a nice change of pace. With the playroom in ruins, I wait by the door until it's time for lunch. Wait, can I see the map right now? Oh yeah, I can. Oh, oh I, I don't like this thing down here. <laughs> no. No! My room... Wait, then why? So wait, we actually had to go through those rooms, though. Oh, yeah. Through those halls. Unless we're teleported. I mean, you literally, like, we literally had a section where we were walking. True. <laughs> Alright, time to eat salmon paste. Please don't. Not the most productive morning. But it could have been a lot worse. Lunch is thankfully uneventful. I ended up eating plain yogurt this time. Something must have gotten stuck in Auntie's synthesizer because large chunks of old tofu ended up floating in my yogurt. Ugh. Okay. I Auntie guess it's better than the toenail yogurt idea. <laughs> Auntie offers no explanation or apology, so I just eat the watery mess without complaint. Auntie bids me farewell, and I wait by the second door for little brother to come pick me up. We walk down the hallway until we arrive at the glass doors leading into the altarium. The altarium? Atrium. Atrium? Oh. Atrium. Is that actually how you say that? Because, like... I believe so. In, in my school, they always call it Altar... Altarium or something like that. Well, I mean, that is... Fucking... Uh, Virginia. Let's Fuck see, how you. Spell? Uh... A... T-R-I-U-M. Because I said Altarium. There's no L. Yeah. <laughs> We walk down the hallway until we arrive. <laughs> what? Did I mess up again? 
I just found it kind of funny. It's, it sounded like your syllables got kind of mashed together. Oh no. Into the X room. Oh no. <laughs> it's continue. Alright. The atrium divides the port and starboard sections of the living quarters and is where I start the second half of my day with Big Sister. Oh, right, that's me. Have fun with Big Sister. I will see you at dinner time. Hmm. And now I have to do. Now I have to figure out how to do a robot Cindy voice. Oh God. Understood, little brother. With that, little brother steps into another charging station, and the atrium doors unlock. I step in, into the atrium and take a moment to relax. The atrium is one of the nicer rooms in the station. The lamps overhead create artificial sunlight, and plastic plants are arranged to resemble a field grass. Speakers hidden inside styrofoam. Boulders play white noise that is supposed to sound like wind. If I try really hard, I can almost buy into the illusion. Most, mostly, I just like how warm the atrium is compared to the rest of the station. Glass door on the other side of the room opens, and Big Sister approaches with heavy, ponderous steps. Oh God! Morph. We will be heading directly to the library. I will hear no complaints on the matter. Do you understand? Of course, big sister. Very good. We have much to do. Do today <laughs> forward march. Yes, ma'am. Big sister has always been harder to read than my other caretakers. She never says more than she needs to, and she rarely diverts from her baseline programming. She is an OCP-7 security drone, and she takes her job very seriously. During the day, I often see her patrolling different sections of the ship, and at night, I sometimes hear her walking around outside my door. I don't mind spending time with Big Sister, but I rarely feel fully comfortable around her. She doesn't try to cheer me up like little brother. And she doesn't joke around like Auntie. Most of the time, she's just quiet. Big Sister escorts me to the library and directs me to my desk in the center of the room. The computers here store thousands of digital books for me to read, and Big Sister tutors me about a different subject each day. Big Sister teaches me about grammar, science, mathematics, and galactic history. After each lesson, she prints out a stack of worksheets for me to complete. Today's assignment is a multiple choice quiz. You have until six, yeah, just six, six to finish and submit it for grading. Any additional time left over can be used for quiet reading and review. Do you have any questions 
or concerns about this assignment? No, big sister. I believe I can handle it. Very good. I expect nothing less from you. And one more thing. Yes, big sister? I was hoping you and I could... Uh, you might notice that today's worksheet is a few pages longer than normal. That was weird. Yeah. If you are able to complete all of it today there will be additional time allotted tomorrow you mean i would get to end class early tomorrow i don't remember you ever letting class end before i was supposed to well it has been eight months and 22 days since I got to spend any time off duty with you and little brother. That was the day we made a scavenger hunt for you in the atrium. I had almost forgotten about that day. Big sister printed off fun facts and we and hid them all over the atrium. It wasn't that hard to find them all, but it was at least something different. I noticed that little brother was submitting requests for new morning activities with you and with you, and I wanted to do the same. More group activities might be beneficial to your mental health. If you would like, I can arrange for Auntie to serve your breakfast, your birthday lunch as a picnic in the atrium. Does that sound nice? Wait, Hatch, if you think about it, we had the potatoes for breakfast, and for lunch we had the yogurt. That means there's only one choice left for dinner. Uh, great. Oh, that actually sounds wonderful. It would be a great way to celebrate my birthday. Are you sure Mother would approve? She doesn't like it when we leave our designated areas with that. Contesting, contacting mother now, request pending. She goes silent and I can hear a series of beeps as she sends a signal to mother. No, you don't have to do that. We can do something else for my birthday. What if mother comes down to the library because of this? There's only one door and not a lot of places I could hide. What would she do to me if... She said no. I'm sorry, big sister. I really would have loved to have a picnic with you. Mother said no. There is no point in continuing this conversation. We have wasted enough time with frivolities. You have work to do.
She steps away and promptly plugs herself into her charging station before I can say anything else. What was that all about? For a moment there, Big Sister was acting... nice? I can't remember the last time she showed me this much emotion. I have to bury my disappointment and focus on the task at hand. The sooner I finish this worksheet, the better. And who knows, there's a chance I could s still get some time off tomorrow, even without the picnic. Luckily, today's worksheet isn't anything too complicated. It's just a few dozen pages of astrophysics and 20 pages of dynamic mo molecular theory. I use a black crayon to fill in the bubbles next to the right answer. Okay, we're smart apparently because I could not understand that shit. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Nothing too complicated. Yeah. I see. Nothing too complicated for me. It's two plus two. <laughs> and you still probably get it wrong half the time. The answer's fish, right? Sure. <laughs> Things like numbers and figures have always come easy to me. Even with my bad memory, Big Sister makes me study so thoroughly. I can usually remember most of this stuff. She doesn't have much else to do besides breaking crayons and study. I mean, true. Oh, yeah. Plus, this is like some space age sit. Standard True. curriculum has to have gotten insane. Yeah. Even if I forget the smaller details of a lesson, the bigger picture still remains. I can almost see the numbers and equations lining up all on their own. I finished the worksheet in only ha a half hour. Maybe Big Sister made this worksheet easier than normal as an early birthday present. Luck over at her, but she hasn't moved from a charging station. She seemed really disappointed when Mother rejected her picnic idea. For a moment, I thought Big Sister actually missed spending time with me. I know she's a robot, but for a moment, I wanted to believe her concern was genuine. Either way, her little outburst of kindness has left me more confused than ever. I try to shake this feeling off and move on. I feed my worksheet into this slot and wait for the machine to process the results. A small screen appears to show how many questions I got correct. 100% correct. I can't help but feel a little proud about this. Now that I'm all, all done, I am free to use my computer until dinner time. I touch the screen and boot up the applications. Normally I like playing the computer's memory games since they help me clear my head. There is also a book ready for me to read. Big Sister approves my reading material ahead of time and downloads it onto my computer. Today, it seems she picked out a medical textbook of biological cell growth under specific atmospheric conditions. I'm pretty sure I've read this one before. I'm already bored from reading the synopsis alone. Either option would be a good ex exercise for my memory, and either would offer a decent way to pass the time until dinner. I tap the screen and make a choice. Hmm. I say memory games. Yeah. I click on the memory game icon and the screen lights up with a grid of little squares. This one is easy. You just click on the little boxes to see what number they have on the other side, then click on the matching. I already lost. I mean, that was just bad luck. Today has been already been more than a little stressful. I'm sure it, has, it was nothing to be worried about. 
I try a few more times, trying to match the numbers again and again, but I just keep losing. Was this game always so difficult? That's not a good sign. Nope. A little flustered, I exit out and try a different game. This one proves to be a bit easier. There are four colors, and it shows you a short sequence that you have to repeat back. Each time you get the sequence correct, it starts over and adds one more color. Once I get into a good rhythm, my nerves settle back down. The sequences get longer and longer, and I only have to start over once or twice. After a few more attempts, I get really good. I got a, I got a really good streak going. 144 correct guesses in a row. The computer makes a congratulatory beep and opens up a list of my previous high scores. I smile as today's score appears on the screen. At the very bottom. Oh no. This can't be right. I have absolutely no memory of winning any of the, these other high scores. But every single one has my name written next to it. 301, 385, two times in a row where I scored 491. When did I get so bad at this game? Has my memory really slipped this far already? For a brief moment, I was stupid enough to actually feel proud of myself. Hey, big sister? Big sister unhooks from her charging station and walks over to my desk. What is the problem for... Look at these high scores. Do you remember when I got them? Yes, I do. You got that high score exactly four years, one month, and 17 days ago. You were very happy, and we talked about it all night during dinner. Big sister, can I ask you a serious question? As long as it is within my capacity to answer. <laughs> Harley Quinn and Squid were having a conversation. <laughs> Bounce, bop. Honestly, to be fair, I think Holly Quinn and me have the same personality. <laughs> or similar, I should say. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. How long did the other patients live after their memories started failing? <laughs> You know, I do not have permission to share medical information with you directly. This is something that you would need to ask Mother about. But she never tells me anything. I place my hand over my mouth, ashamed of my sudden outburst. Mother doesn't like it when I complain to the other caretakers. This is clearly distressing you. Is this because of your score today? Yeah, I worked so hard and did my best. But it wasn't anything compared to how good I used to be. I just... I feel so stupid. Fourth. Yes? What I am about to show you 
cannot leave this room. There's a small series of beeps and my computer screen suddenly changes. Display now shows me a graph of all my high scores over the course of the last 18 years. From where a score starts, there's a small bump of followed by a drastically sharp decline until it reaches my score today at the very end. If this was supposed to make me feel better, I don't think... I am not done. A second graph appears on the screen. This one is much smaller. The scores barely get past the double digits before they suddenly plummet down to nearly zero. This is classified information. I had to use my birthday present privileges just to access it. I apologize if this means I cannot give you anything tomorrow. This graph was made from data taken from a patient who lived untreated on a remote mining colony 32 years ago. The patient had the exact same illness you do and was given the exact same test. Their mental state deteriorated at this rate over the course of two years and eleven months before they entered the final stage. Your rate of deterioration over 18 years is equivalent to that to what they went through in less than a month. You have to factor in variables to properly see the difference between you and them. You contracted the disease from your parents before you were even born. You have lived your entire life with the top of the line medical care 24 hours a day. I know this might not bring you peace of mind. You want right now, but the chances of you living long enough for a cure to be found is 74.85% out of the millions of infected individuals across the galaxy you are statistically the most likely to survive So what if your high scores aren't what they used to be? You are still alive, and you are lucky enough to live aboard the most sophisticated medical research station ever built. At this point, all of the robot voices are just turning into the same one. <laughs> Every day, we work to keep you alive. Our only goal is your survival. So you have to put a little faith in us, right? Thank you. That means a lot coming from you, big sister. Some days I feel trapped in my own body. Almost like I can't feel my insides starting... It's almost like I can feel my insides starting to rot. I just needed to know that one day I might be okay. You gave me the best birthday present I could have hoped for. For a moment, I have to resist the urge to hug this sister. She spoke to me like she, I was a real person and not just a patient.
Our time is up. We need to get ready for your dinner. You will not tell any of the other caretakers what we discussed today, will you? Of course not. Mm. Why would a robot need to clear their throat? I don't know. Well, do not expect something like this to happen again. Mother does not want us discussing too many details about your illness. She wants to avoid causing you any unnecessary stress. Yeah, I understand. Very young. I expect nothing less from you. Boots on the ground, soldier. We are moving out. Yes, ma'am. The library door unlocks and we walk back to the kitchen in silence. I can't help but smile the entire way there. Dinner is my favorite time of the day. Not because of the food, but because it's the only time of day everyone gets to be together in the same room. When I sit down on my stool, I can feel my mat crinkle, crinkle slightly inside my dress. I have to be careful not to drop it. My little brother is sitting on a stool next to me. His feet are too short to reach the floor, so he swings them back and forth while humming to himself. Big sister stands watch by the exit. Fire safety regulations dictate that the kitchen doesn't have locking doors, so it's her job to make sure I don't leave. She keeps trying to cross her arms, but she doesn't, doesn't quite have the range of motion to do so properly. <laughs> For dinner, Auntie synthesizes a large pile of meat, then heats up her serving plate to cook it. I can't complain since this is... Easily the best thing she can make. If it wasn't for how strictly she enforces the other food groups, I would want to eat meat for every meal. Auntie doesn't season the meat at all, but I read in a book oh, once, once that human tears contain salt. I used to make myself cry onto my dinner just to make it taste better, but I stopped when Auntie got too worried about me. That's depressing. I missed a chunk of that because I randomly lost internet. Oh no. But... Okay, so basically, Auntie doesn't season the meat, so she heard that tears have salt in it. A bit of salt. So she cried into her food until Auntie got worried about her. I don't like that. Yeah. That makes me sad. <laughs> Once her plate has cooled down enough, I, I can begin eating. I take a few big bites and savor the food as best as I can. After a long day, this is exactly what I need. Cheers to another wonderful day. I cannot wait to see what new adventures tomorrow brings. Have you given any thought to what you want for your birthday tomorrow? You should ask little brother and auntie. They each have one birthday present privilege to use on your behalf. You want new activities for the playroom, correct? 
I came up with <laughs> 108 new ideas that I have been submitting to Mother every hour on the hour. She has turned down all of them so far, but that just means I have to go. I have got to try even harder. Aw, poor little brother. Aw. Aw. I could submit a request for more botanical allowances. I have been researching the concept of spices. <laughs> I bet I could grow some pretty healthy new plants. Big Sister doesn't offer any suggestions at first, so I shoot her a glance and clear my throat. She knows my hint and chimes into the conversation. I remember how much you liked those fictional books we used to have in the, the library. I bet I could convince Mother to unban a few. Especially with how good your test scores have been. You guys, these are, are these are all such wonderful ideas. What about your own privilege or present privilege? Do not forget that you are allowed one request. Asked for yourself. I had almost forgotten about that. So many previous birthdays have already faded from my mind. I can't remember a single present privilege that mother actually approved. I think I asked for a new hairbrush once and she allowed that. I don't know where my hairbrush went. Maybe she took it back the next time I misbehaved. I know deep down what I want for my birthday. I want my lake. I want to go far away from here and leave all this pain behind. Unfortunately, honesty is something that only makes mother angrier. I have to give them a more diplomatic answer this time. I want better drawing supplies. I want more options for my meals. I want to read books in my bedroom. Hmm. We can have more salmon based options. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, we can get bass paste. We can get uh, uh, pufferfish paste. <laughs> hey, Bright. Yes. Have you ever thought what would it be like to dr jump in a rushing river? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should think that. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go for, for, for meals, but first I'm gonna save. Okay. If it was me, I'd probably go for better drawing supplies. I close my eyes and clear my head. As much as I love my caretakers, I have to keep playing the part they expect from me. Maybe I could ask for permission to help Auntie in the kitchen. If I could have access to the individual ingredients, I bet I can make my food much more nutritious. Oh, four. This is the nicest thing you could have possibly said. I am tickled positively pink. <laughs> you are pink. Yeah. <laughs> I know I don't have access to the greenhouse, but if Auntie brought approved ingredients up to the kitchen first, maybe I could help her prepare them. Kitchens involve uh, chopping utensils and heat. It might not be the safest place for our fourth.
You can count on me to do all the dangerous stuff ahead of time. I would slice up the fruits and vegetables first, then let forth into the kitchen. We will have a lot of planning to get this to work. I will consult with Mother later tonight about this. Oh, Pish Pish, you know the kitchen is my territory. I get the final say in all things that are digest. Die at just a bowl. <laughs> Big Sister and Auntie get into whatever passes for an argument between robots. I tune them out and try not to think about what I really wanted. The caretakers stay totally silent until I finish my meal. My daily schedule is always the same. Mornings with little brother, meals with Auntie, in the afternoons with Big Sister. The last thing I do before bedtime is my nightly medical checkup. There's no avoiding what comes next. The second I eat my last bite, dinner will end and I'll have to go see Mother. Oh. Uh -oh. At one point, I eat my dinner as quickly as possible. Oh wait, at one point I used to eat my dinner as quickly as possible. I just wanted to get it all over with so I could spend the rest of my evening alone in my room. But after a while, I started eating slower and slower. Even if this happiness is fake, I want to exist in this moment for just a little while longer. I can pretend that me and my caretakers are a real family. Little brother will do something silly and I'll just roll my eyes. Auntie will say something weird to make me laugh, and Big Sister will fail to hide how much she really cares. A life like that would have been boring, but at least it would have been safe. I stare into the blinking electronic faces. Their screens all show happy little smiles, but their eyes are just as empty as other pieces of machinery ab aboard this station. Maybe if I keep forgetting, I can go back to a time where I believe that they actually loved me. The moment I finish dinner, they are going to take me away from this happy fantasy. Time to be a good girl, Forth. You're going to have to face Mother sooner or later. I take the last bite, and my caretakers all spring into action. Without another word, Auntie disinfects the plate and vanishes into her chute. Little brother hops off his stool and darts past Big Sister out into the hallway. Or it is time to go. I let out a long sigh and I try my best to ignore the angry buzzing growing behind my eyes. I'm ready to go see Mother now. I think little brother is trying to talk to me, but his words don't make it all the way to my ears. I just stare down at the floor, forcing my legs to keep carrying me forward. Eventually, they lead me to the intersection in front of my bedroom. The floor is coated with so many layers of dried brown blood that it nearly looks black. Other fluid splatters reach all the way up the walls, forming little selectites of yellowed crust. Oh. Each other part of the station gets cleaned at night, but not this- Your checkup, Forth. Once you're done, I will escort- <sighs> Need a drink. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon, Forth. Good night. With that, I am left alone. As I wait, my body feels cold, and my heart is, staring, is starting to hammer against my ribcage. If I try to run, okay. Mother will just hurt me even worse. 
They've got five viewers right now. Yeah. Something is wrong with Mother. The caretakers won't acknowledge it, no matter how many times I bring it up. I have no memory left of what she used to look like before. Before she became what she is now. It's like something awful is growing inside of her, replacing what used to be my mother, piece by piece. She might have been a robot long ago, but not anymore. Now, she's just a monster. I hate mother more than anything else in this awful station. If my life was just boring, I could learn to live with that. But she makes everything so much worse. There's nothing I can do now but wait for it all to be over. In the ceiling above me, I can hear a horrible metallic scraping noise accompanied by the tearing of wet flesh. It echoes through the empty corridors and makes my ears ring. Mother grew too large to use the hallways anymore, so now she travels through the vents in the upper levels, dropping down through the access panels cut into the ceiling. Sometimes at night, I can hear her slithering above me, screaming and laughing loud enough to rattle the walls of the station. <laughs> the stutters on the access panel slide away to reveal a gaping black void directly above my head. I can't see her yet, but I know she is there in the darkness. Thick rivers of pus and blood start to pour down through the opening, splashing onto the floor around me. Her foul stench pierces my nostrils, and I do my best not to gag. I've learned the hard way not to let any trace of disgust show on my face. There she is. My beautiful little girl. I was so worried about you. I take a deep breath to try and calm down the fear welling up inside me. Every muscle in my body is telling me to run, but I don't listen. Hello, Mother. I know your time is precious, so I appreciate your presence this evening. Oh, dear God. Uh, that is not a robot. Oh, is it all you have to say to me? I was having such a wonderful day up until now. Doesn't my wonderful little girl have it in her to give me a proper greeting? As her gigantic body coils around me, Bits of her begin to fall off in large wet chunks. Something that looks like an enlarged liver lands with a splat right next to me, spraying my leg with flecks of yellow bile. I am so happy to see you again. My good health is only possible thanks to your constant hard work. Thank you, Mother. I am forever in your debt. It's a start, if nothing else. You really need to work on your compliments, my dear boy. Am I not the, not who you love most in the universe? You would have died long, long ago if not for me. I've saved your life countless times. And what sort of thanks do you show me? Did you have fun today? Breaking what your family worked so hard to make for you? What? Don't play stupid with me, little girl. Those toys that little brother made for you. He was so heartbroken when he saw what you did to them. You really hate little brother that much that you'd spit in his face when he does nothing but love you? No, mother. 
I love little brother with all my heart. I just thought he was going to. I don't want to hear excuses from you. Because you can't appreciate what you already have. I am denying little brother's birthday request. As a fair and loving parent, I think that you shouldn't be allowed any new recreational materials until you can appreciate what you already have. I have smashed my toys dozens of times, and Mother has never once committed on that. Commented on that. She is just using it as an excuse to ignore little brother's request. I have to quell the anger growing inside me, or I might say something that really sets Mother off. I am sorry, Mother. I didn't think through my actions. I would do better to stop and think before I act next time. That was rather foolish of me. Foolish? Such soft words for something so monumentally stupid. I want to hear you say it. Tell me what you are. I am a stupid little girl who should have known better. At least you're willing to admit it. I really have raised you well, haven't I? Ugh. I noticed that big sister downloaded some information outside her clearance level. She accessed some really taboo data, didn't she? You wouldn't happen to know why a big sister would do something so dangerously stupid. Now, would you? I freeze for a moment, unsure if I should be honest or not. Big sister might get in trouble if I don't speak up, but if I tell the truth... Your face tells me everything I need to know. She probably thought she could get away with it. Didn't she? I thought she, thought she could outsmart me. I had to make her punishment painful enough so she won't ever forget it. Wouldn't you agree that's for the best? No, she didn't. No? So you're saying that I am wrong? Are you questioning my judgment? All I meant was, Big Sister didn't do anything wrong. So whose fault is it? Look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. I, I was feeling sad. Big Sister only did it to cheer me up. It was all my fault. One of her mechanical arms moves closer to my face, till a sharp middle tip of a syringe is hovering in front of my eye. Speak up, child. You know I hate it when you mumble. Whose fault is it? It's my fault. Entirely my fault. Good. That's what I like to hear. Didn't I teach you that honesty is a virtue? Yes, you did, Mother. Very good. It is time for your treatment. You know what to do. I take a moment to steadily... I take a moment to steady my shaky hands. Then I unbutton the back of my dress. Oh god, her back. Yeah. Mother slithers into position behind me. One of her limbs opening up to allow a series of needles to poke through. Flush blood gushes out from one. A fresh blood gushes out from this new opening, coating mechanical arms in a shiny red paste. She says that my sickness causes a buildup of harmful fluids along my spine. She doesn't drain them once a day. They can build up and cause nerve or even brain damage. 
small rather nodes rub up against my back to help line up the needles with my spine. I take a deep breath through my nose and brace myself for the pain. So many ugly scars. I wonder how you got it. It couldn't have been my fault. My instruments are far too precise. Oh, that's right. You used to squirm around when you were younger. You caused my needles to miss over and over. That's how it happened. I can hear her. I can hear the mocking tone in her voice as she inserts the needles. White hot pain shoots through me. My legs threaten to buckle. I can feel tears welling up in my eyes, and my teeth grind against each other with enough force to hurt my gums. The pump turns on with a horrible sucking sensation, nearly causes me to pass out. I can see a vicious yellow liquid passing through the rubber tubes up into my and mother's arm. Right as the needles are removed, mother sprays a cooling medical gel across my back. The pain subsides almost instantly. I can feel the gel bubbling as it seals up the injection sites. I should be grateful since mother doesn't always use the gel afterwards. She doesn't want to waste it on the undeserving, as she puts it. Very good. You did a wonderful job. I remember how much you used to scream when I did this. You've come a long way. Yes, Mother. Thank you for taking such good care of me. There's an uncomfortable stiffness in my shoulders as I rebutton my dress. The gel might have numbed the pain, but my body is still very sore. All that's left is your medicine. Then you'll be healthy and strong. A single syringe full of pale tur turquoise liquid emerges from Mother's arm, and I help guide it into the place above my wrist. The thick needle plunges into my arm and injects me with my medicine. I can feel it entering my muscles where it begins to throb painfully. I feel a little nauseous and fight the urge not to vomit. That's all for tonight. Your vitals are within acceptable ranges, and you seem to have no major side effects manifesting. About your birthday tomorrow. Yes, Mother? It's such a strange human tradition, isn't it? Just because you were born on this day doesn't make it any different from any other day. How odd. I assume you haven't changed your mind about what you want to waste your present privileges, have you? You are so vocal at dinner. Why don't you share what's on your mind with dear old mother? There's something about her tone that tells me she wants to hear a specific response. The anger inside me wants to speak up and tell her what I really think about this whole charade. But she has so many ways to hurt me. I put a hand on my aching shoulder. Last week she stabbed me there for speaking back and took a large section of my of skin when she removed the empty syringe. I can't risk making her any more upset than she already is, no matter how badly I want to tell her off. Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna be right back. Oh, okay. Catch it, entertain the screen. Well, I was probably just gonna go mute. Oh, okay. So.
Okay, ivory tongue. But yeah, I understand that, uh, Ray Rapids, that you're the developer of this game. been a genuine pleasure. We've had a lot of hit or miss experiences with uh, visual novels and reading visual novels here. Been enjoying it greatly and even caught a few typos in it. Yeah. And like, in terms of like, the visual novels we have gone through on this channel, this has to be easily within the top three thus far. It's... Yeah, I agree. That Jesus Christ, you're back. Okay, <laughs> hello. <laughs> but yeah, it's... E even for just a demo, this is very entertaining. I'm enjoying it very much. Visual mode. Visuals novels make up some of the best and worst games I have played in equal amounts. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's the thing with visual novels. It's like, since there's very. Very long story or narrative to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah, no worries. Yeah. We're really enjoying this. Yeah. Ready to go back? Yeah. So are we going to incur Mother's wrath or stay silent? Hmm. Well, I'm always a dumb motherfucker, so... <laughs> you already know my choice. <laughs> Alright. I did save, right? Yeah. So, yeah. My hands slowly clench into fist. She can't keep tripping. Uh, <laughs> she can't keep tripping me. <laughs> she can't keep keep tripping me. Every day she, every day she pushes me over. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. She can't keep treating me like this. Not if she expects me to stay her perfect little daughter. Why did I give that voice? Wait a minute. <laughs> Even if she hurts me again, I have to tell her what I want. I want her to treat me like a real person and not just a patient. I want to be kept in the loop about my treatment and to tell me about what's going on outside this station. I want my leg. I want it bad enough to stand up to her. Mother... What I want most of all is... I don't need to hear it. What? You're boring me. Just tell everyone to little brother. I'll deny it anyway. I don't have any more time to waste here. Good night, my lovely little fourth. Never doubt how much your mother loves you. I will keep you safe. You just have to trust me. So, uh, in listening to Mother's dialogue, yeah, I'm immediately brought back to all the our slash insane parents posts. Oh I gosh. To on the click videos mm -hmm. this is uh arc art m mimics reality yeah 
Before I can finish my thought, she is gone. As she squeezes, squeezes back up through the vent overhead, she sheds a few more sections of rotting flesh. A final wave of blood sloshes out from the vent right as it snaps shut. The blood lands in my hair and drips down my face. I stand there too stunned to move at first. Boring. She doesn't even care about what I want, what I think, or what matters to me. Oh no. Oh god. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I stay rooted in place, covered in her blood, fuming. Hello again, my darling four. I hope you check- I hope your checkup with Mother was both productive and fulfilling. Yeah, it was. I am going to die in this place. It doesn't matter if it's by mother's hand or from the disease howling out my brain. I don't even Halloween? have to. Halloween. Halloween out my brain. Why did I say <laughs> Halloween out my brain? Like there's just a dog that pops out of my head and starts howling. <laughs> you are a furry. No. This disease. This is. Oh, no. This disease is the pathogen. Oh god. It makes you a furry. Oh no. <laughs> Anyways, I don't even have the energy to imagine an escape plan anymore. I can feel the weight of resignation slowly suffocating me as I walk back to my bedroom. I don't know what to do next. There are just too many steps between me and freedom. No way off the station, no way out of the living quarters, no way past mother. No matter where I go or what I do, mother is always watching. She is bigger and faster than me, and if she finds out I'm trying to escape, there's no telling what she will do. Even if everything went right, if I somehow manage to escape, what comes next? I escape just to die somewhere else? Am I really that contagious? If I find other people out there, will they just put me right back in here? Will they try to kill me? What if my sickness kills them first? This whole time, little brother has been talking to me. His words don't have any meaning. They just bounce off of me and vanish into thin air. I can feel myself getting angrier and angrier the more he keeps talking. I just want him to stop to go away and leave me alone for once before I can stop myself all that bottled anger comes out of my throat and finally takes form will you just shut up already will you stop acting like everything is fine how can you possibly be this stupid a chill runs down my skin the moment I realize what I just did I have never spoken to anyone with that much anger before. The words feel like poison coating my mouth. <coughs> I'm so sorry, Fourth. I did not understand. Oh. I realized now what I did. Now what I did wrong. I am making you unhappy instead of happy. My only purpose is to make you happy. I will leave now. I hope you feel better in the morning. I am so sorry that I failed you. Oh. Oh. Wait, little brother, I didn't. I don't have anything left supporting my legs, so I fall to my knees. There isn't enough strength in me to stop the tears. I kneel there on the floor crying until the lights begin to dim. It's bedtime now. I have to put this awful day behind me and get ready for the awful tomorrow in front of me. I have to go about my 
nightly routine in the dark now. I brush my teeth and do what I can to rinse mother's blood off of my face and hair. I stand on the scale and let the machine take my vitals one more time. Once the scan is done, I stand by the corner of my bed, body heavy and my mind swirling with horrible thoughts. After today, I don't think I have it in me to pretend anymore. When I see little brother again, I'll try to apologize, but deep down, I have a horrible feeling that I won't really mean it. It felt good to be that cruel, to let out all the ugliness I have buried come bubbling back up to the surface. I wanted to take out every frustration I have ever felt out on little brother. I felt like a monster. There in the darkness... Oh god, what happened? I had the wrong button. <laughs> there in the darkness, I can sense all of my options slipping away. All the hope I once possessed just draining out until there is an empty shell in its place. I'm just a stupid little girl with a broken brain. A single word forms in my mind, fueled by the very last shard of my soul. I take in a deep breath and release what is left of me into the universe. Please. Oh, what? What? The fuck? Okay, so I'm guessing this is robotic, but what voice should I go with? Albert. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I don't feel like doing the Russian voice for this. <laughs> Why would it be Russian? <laughs> Throw it. <laughs> then, then again, it's not like I've ever asked that question before. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> there is someone else in the room with me. It's a faint, static-filled voice coming from somewhere underneath my bed. Um, hello? Wait a sec. You can actually hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Who are you? Are you alone? Yes. Right? That's you. Oh, f fucking... Fucking internet issues. <laughs> it was caught on the yes for me for a second. Ah. Uh. Alright, then. Walk over to where you hear me and pick me up before the caretakers can come back. I follow the voice lifting up my mattress to see where exactly it's coming from. Between my bed frame and mattress is a small pile of junk I have been collecting over the years. It's mostly stuff I didn't want mother or the other caretakers to take away from me. My hidden trove contains a large stack of drawings, some stolen crayons, a stack of ripped dress fabric, a spool of thread, some of my fingernails, a few baby teeth, a screw that came from one of the kitchen stools, and a broken tip of a syringe mother forgot to remove from my arm. But then I noticed one more object mixed in with the rest of my stolen treasures, something I don't recognize. It's a small piece of broken electronics about the size of my fist. It feels cold and heavy in my hand, and the torn bits of metal on the edges presses into my skin. When did I find this? I tried to delve deeper into my memories, grasping at anything that might. That's when it all comes flying back to me. Father? Oh. Oh. I used to have five caretakers, not four. Little brother, auntie, big sister, mother, and father. The tiny screen in the center of the device comes to life bathing my dark room in an eerie red light. Is that what you called me? Father! I am more certain now that this is what rem remains of father. He and mother used to fight all the time, arguing over the best treatments for me. 
One day, mother couldn't take it anymore, and she... She ate him. Is that what she did? It still doesn't seem real. For the longest time, I thought it was just a nightmare. I can't remember why mother attacked him, but I can't remember her ter but I can remember her tearing into his body, spraying oil all over the walls with each bite. A piece of father landed at my feet, and in a panic, I hid it in my dress, taking it back to my room. Maybe I was foolish enough to think I could repair him. I was just a kid back then. I didn't know any better. From that day forward, mother started changing. I'm certain of it now. That was the day everything on the station changed. Mother started growing. The other caretakers started acting differently too, as if they were scared of what mother might do to them. Scared of that she might eat them as well. I wish I could remember more about that day, but what caused that argument? Why did father say, what did father say to make mother that mad? As hard as I can, I try, the details continue to elude me. Uh, you called me father. Describe to me what I look like. What you look like? Yes, I am very weak right now. My memory is still booting back up. You are just a piece of scrap metal. Just some old electronics. Could you be more specific? Can you identify any of my functional parts by name? I am sorry, sir. I'll try to be more concise. I see a directional microphone, a pinhole speaker, a Neo Flash memory chip, a DSF amplifier, a quartz RPM radiation charge battery, and uh, I think a Dacron 7 accelerator, sir. It's. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Not a lot to work with. I guess I'll have to make do with this for now. I have no way to actually see my surroundings. Can you tell me who you are? Have you already forgotten about me? I'm fourth. How much of your memory did you lose? Fourth? You're still there? That's impossible. No one was supposed to. How have you been able to stay alive this long? My caretakers, they've been treating my sickness all my life. I'm not exactly sure what you mean, sir. Father doesn't say anything for a long time. Just when I begin to worry that he broke again, he finally starts talking again. This complicates things. I didn't realize you've been trapped here all alone. You must be very brave to survive as long as you have. I... I don't feel very brave, sir. Don't say that. Stronger people than you have run from far less. Mother... Is she still... broken? Yeah, she's still broken. She keeps growing and keeps changing. This is very bad. At this rate, should, she could go critical any day now. You're in an enormous amount of danger. Yeah, I'm aware, sir. I'm going to get you out of there, Fourth. What did you just say? I said I'm going to get you off of this station. There it is. The thing I've been waiting for my entire life. A chance. For the first time since I started dreaming, my lake has finally gotten a little bit closer. It might still be impossibly far away, but I won't let it get away this time. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it.
you are aboard the quarantine station 388-SR. It was built to combat one of... Mm. It was built to combat one of the worst viral outbreaks the universe has ever seen. But it was built too late and the few who managed to get aboard succumbed to their illness within a matter of months. The people who built this station are all long dead. No one even knows that this station is still operational, and they all assumed it was lost or destroyed years ago. No one will come to rescue. Come to your rescue now, so you will have to rescue yourself. What about my sickness? If I leave, won't I just infect other people? We can deal with that once you're safe. You'll just have to put a little faith in me until then. Okay. I'll try. I still have to work out the smaller details of our escape plan, but I have a rough idea on how we could make this work. Construction was never completed on the lower levels of the station. Building regulations require a minimum amount of long-range escape pods to be available for workers in case of an emergency. So there are only three steps to this plan. One, we get you to the lower levels. Two, we cause an emergency big enough to activate the remaining escape pods. Three, we escape. It can't be that simple. Even if there were escape pods on this station, in the past, what if they, they've they all been used already? What if Mother destroyed them all? What if... You need to calm down, Forth. This is going to work. We just need to be careful. Can you be careful for me? I... I think I can, sir. Have the caretakers ever ever kept details hidden from you about your sickness. Yes, they won't even tell me the name of my disease. They keep saying it's all unnecessary details to shut me down. Do you want to know why they do that? Yes. It's because your sickness can greatly accelerate whenever you are stressed. It was a measure... It was a measure intended to keep you calm during treatment, but I have a feeling it had the opposite effect. I will make you a promise right now, once you get off the station. I will tell you everything you want to know. Can you hold out just a little longer on Pilsen? Yes, sir. Good. Then we better get started. I love the fact that we just kind of together came to the conclusion that both mother and father wouldn't have robotic voices. Yeah. But every other robot does. Yeah. Honestly, a part of it is just I'm kind of tired of doing robot. Yeah, and I kind of want to give, like, the mother more of a spookier, sinister voice. Yeah. Okay. So I think you've already noticed that I am not in the best shape right now, duh. Yeah, you fit in my hand. Mother almost ate almost every part of you. It goes without saying that I've lost almost all of my core functionality. It's already taking me this long to reboot to my current state. This is about the halfway point of the demo. Oh, yeah. okay. If I had to guess, I'd say that I'm running at probably 5% of my normal capacity. Maybe even less than that. But we can change that. 
The first thing I need to do is to plug myself into the station system. Then I can try to gain administration. It did the street is. You good? Then I can try to become admin control man. With that, I could turn off cameras, unlock security doors, maybe even reactivate the elevators to lower levels. That sounds great. How do we do that? Well, I can think of a few ways. Do you know where the living quarters admin station is? Um, no, I'm sorry, sir. God damn. Give me a second to pull up some blueprints. What does that word mean? What word? Blueprints? Not that one. Damn. Isn't that a structure to hold back water? <laughs> Do you know what swear words are? No, sir. It's something you say when, uh, when you're very upset to express frustration, pain, impatience. Never mind, I'll just put that on my list of things to teach you once we're free. I will teach you the proper usage of the fuck word. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, there are lots of fun. Let's refocus, alright? <laughs> the admin station should be right next to the atrium. It's, it's right. Now you've got me to see it wrong, I think. <laughs> it's real. No, wait, that is how you... I, I God damn it. <laughs> the admin station should be right next to the atrium on the port side of the living quarters. Can you reach that? There's literally a part of the code that keeps track of how many swear words forth have learned. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> That's cool. That's Funny. That's so great. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I could if my bedroom door is unlocked. Let me handle that. You can just plug me into maintenance panel and you'll be able to open it. If you give me a few minutes, that is. Once the door is unlocked, you just need to carry me over to the station without any of the other caretakers noticing. I'll upload myself to the system and then we'll be cooking with gas. Uh, cooking with what? It's just a figure of speech. For a moment, I try to picture myself leaving my room at night. The possibility of sneaking out has never once crossed my mind. Since the doors have been locked every night for as long as I can remember. What happens if one of the caretakers sees me? What if mother sees me? Just thinking about it, I can feel my body starting to tremble. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, that's a good thing we got the map now. Because we yeah. can see where they hang out. You said there were a few ways you can gain administrative access. What are the other ways? Well, you could always plug me into the maintenance panel by your door and just, I guess, let me try to remotely hack it? That would take a hell of a lot longer and we wouldn't have admin access until tomorrow morning. Hell. Another swear word. Uh, don't worry about it. If, if you think you can afford the time, then... Uh, if you think you can afford the time, then you don't have to take the risk. I would prefer to have admin access tonight. That way I would have time to really dive into the systems and plan our escape route. On the other hand, the escape plan won't matter if you get caught. 
I'll trust whatever decision you make. I'm probably gonna have to stay here. You will? Of course. What else can I do? Grow legs and just walk away? You have all the power right now, Force. I do, don't I? It's strange to hear a caretaker speak to me like this. To actually trust me. I can feel a genuine smile growing on my face for the first time in a long time. Father? Yes, Ford? What is it? Thank you. Not just for helping me, but for treating me like a person. But you are a person. <laughs> yeah, I had almost forgotten. Okay, then. We should get moving. What do you think we should do? Well, we got the map. Uh, I can I do it sure tonight. That. Huh? I, I guess we're going loud. Yep. I can do it tonight. Or sneaky. I can get you to admin station and I won't get caught. I shock myself a little with how confident I sound. I don't know where the courage is coming from. The thought of breaking my curfew is still terrifying. I need to be extremely careful if I want to pull this off. Okay then. I will talk you through the process every step of the way. I'll be there to help you. Thank you, Father. First. First step, will you see the door out of your room? Yeah, it's locked like it, it is every night. Only my caretakers can open it. So there should be a black line of rubber along the outside in between two silver bra braces. Look to your left and follow the black line up until you see a seam in the metal. I follow his instructions and just like you said, there's a small seam cut into the metal frame a little above my eye level. Now use your thumb to push it. Push on it for five seconds and then pull your hand away. I hesitate for a moment, worried that this might set off some sort of alarm. I steal my re resolve and push against the metal seam for five seconds. There's a slight hiss of air and a rectangular panel opens up on the wall next to the door. Did it open? It works, sir. I can see a bunch of wires and electronics inside. Good. Now plug my DSF amplifier into the outlet that looks like a triangle. I find the outlet and plug what is left of father in. For a moment, the his screen goes dark, but just as quickly as it turns back on, there is a, a tiny sequence of beats. Alright, this is going to be easier than I thought. That's a, that's a good thing, right? A very good thing. The onboard security systems have been completely scrambled. Some systems have military-grade encryption, but others are left wide open. What happened to this place? It's probably from Mother. She had enemy control over the station ever since... you, you know... died. That makes a lot of sense. She probably prioritizes systems based on how likely they are to be attacked. A lot of the stuff in here hasn't been used in a long time, so there was never a need to update the security. I can gain control over level 1 doors, lights, motion sensors. That's way more than I thought I'd be able to access. This next part is going to be a piece of gig. It's gonna be gross? What? Oh no! <laughs> you 
He said a piece of cake. That means it's gonna be gross, right? No. <laughs> Father doesn't elaborate, and I feel too embarrassed to ask him for clarification. I thought cakes were a bad thing. When you're ready, I'll open the door and we can head to the admin station. Since I turned off the motion sensors, the caretakers won't know where you are. But that also means I can't tell you where they are either. What about the cameras? I've read about security systems that use cameras to mon monitor patients or prisoners. I don't see any subsystems for visual cameras. That would only be needed if there were humans still aboard to monitor you manually. Everything here is automated now, remember? The caretakers use heat and motion sensors to track your movements. I diverted just enough power away to disable them, but they will still register as functional to the main system. You should be completely invisible to them. It can't be that easy to just turn off the security like that. You're probably right. I don't know what routines the caretakers run at night. I bet they're built. I bet that I bet they have built-in sensors on their physical bodies and could still detect you if they got close enough. You'll have to avoid them at all costs. Do you understand? Understood, sir. I can do this. Maybe if I say it out loud enough times, I might start to believe it. I can do this. Alright, I got through the first layer. As soon as you unplug me, the door will open. I can do this. Nothing could have prepared me for how different the station looks at night. I've never seen these hallways without the lights on and a sudden cascade of shadows has left me reeling. The second my bare feet hit the floor, a bolt of pain shoots up my legs. The heating must be turned off and the metal is so cold that it feels like I'm stepping on needles. <laughs> Sir, this doesn't feel right. The station must be some sort of low power mode right now, disabling any unnecessary system outside of my bedroom. Without the usual noise from the air vents, a deep and unsettling silence blankets the station. I can hear my own heart beating in my chest. The vibrations travel up my spine and resonate in my ears. I can feel my breath getting shorter and my whole body trembling with fear. F Father, I don't think I can do this. My heart is... is... Orf. You can't let your heart rate get too high. Just in your breathing, in and out, one after another. I try to slow down my breathing, but I can't fight the lump forming in my throat. Each breath feels sh shallower than the last, and the pain is getting so bad that tears begin to form in my eyes. <laughs> Father, it's not working. It's going to be alright. If fear is overtaking you, then you need to replace it with a different emotion. What makes you happy? Think of something that makes you feel safe and fixate on that. My... my lake. Tell me about it. What is your lake? It's cold. It's cold, but I don't mind. The rest of the world is its so warm that I don't mind the cold water. I can feel breeze all around me, and the sun on my face. I'm okay. The pain drifts away, and I can feel my body going back to normal. A thin layer of sweat still sticks to my skin, but I can feel my arms and legs again. I'm back, sir. Good. Next time you feel like that, just picture your leg. The medical units aboard this ship have heat rate monitors, or heart rate monitors. If your heart rate gets too high, it might trigger an alarm. I know this is going to be frightening for you, 
I can't change that. But I will be with you every step of the way. Won't be alone. You promise? I promise. I take I take in one last deep breath and force my legs to keep moving forward, one foot in front of the other. I start to walk away from my room and into the darkness. The admin station should be near the center of the living quarters. There was a big glass room right in the middle, dividing this floor in half. You mean the atrium? Yes, exactly. The atrium. The admin station should be down the left-hand hallway right before the double doors. I walk carefully, making sure to create as little noise as possible with each step. The floor groans slightly as I put my weight down, and I can already feel the fear trickling back into the corners of my mind. Just breathe forth. Think of your lake and breathe. I reach the intersection that connects my bedroom to the playroom and the kitchen. I always imagined that the doors to the other rooms would be locked at night, but both the playroom and kitchen doors are wide open. I tiptoe through the kitchen, resisting the urge to stop and rummage through the, the many cabinets and drawers that line the walls. In the past, I managed to open a few, but all the ones I checked were empty. At least I think so. I'm not sure how long ago that was. I have a very fuzzy memory where I tried to hide inside one of the empty cabinets, but Mother found me almost immediately. I was a lot younger back then, and I could fit into small spaces like that. I don't have any control over my own volume, so I'm going to remain quiet until you talk to me first. Will that be alright? That's a good idea, sir. I'll let you know if I run into any trouble. I peek through the open doorway to the opposite side of the kitchen, making sure the coast is clear before I keep moving. Keep breathing forth. You're almost there. Each step you take is one step closer towards your lake. Not much further now, the atrium should be just at the end of the hall of this hallway. Without the bright lights to reflect on its shiny glass walls, the atrium is slowly is swallowed up in the darkness, like all the windows have been removed. I reach the intersection and take a moment to look down both paths. One goes right, the other goes left. Never been down either of these halls since little brother always escorts me directly into the atrium. I've made it this far and haven't seen any of my caretakers. I might actually be able to pull this off. I hold on to that confidence and take the left hallway. There's a locked metal door blocking the way in and built into the wall is a small keypad with only six buttons. I'm at the admin station sir but the door is locked. Can you open this one too? No need. There should be small console device near the door. It has six buttons, and... Yes, I can see it. Oh, sorry. Bite my lip, a little embarrassed that I interrupted father while he was talking. I can feel the anger bubbling inside me, putting me on edge. Yes, that thing with six buttons. On the underside of the console should be another t triangle shaped plug, just like maintenance panel. Yes, sir. I plug father into the console and take a step back. He beeps twice, then begins to hum slightly at a very low pitch. Is is it working, sir? <laughs> oh boy, is it ever. This is exactly what I needed. Prints, right. Wiring schematics, OS logs, works, work orders, system passwords, you name it. Give me a few mom few minutes to download all of this stuff, and then we can get going. Stay alert and listen for anyone or anything coming our way. I turn away from father and stare down from where we came. The darkness stares back at me. I squint, trying to make sense of the formless shapes swimming in front of my eyes. 
I keep thinking that I see something moving in the darkness, but it keeps turning out to be nothing. My head is buzzing with all sorts of horrible images the longer I look. I can almost picture Mother dragging herself towards me, her long, sharp fingers scraping against the floor, a river of blood trailing behind her. My heart keeps hammering against my ribcage, and whenever I try to shut my eyes, my imagination gets a hundred times worse. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. Or did you say something? Eh, just trying to calm myself down. Uh, calm myself, sir. Oh, I understand. I mean, understood. The silence returns, and I have to clench the fabric of my dress in both hands to stay still. How much longer is this going to take? Suddenly there's a noise, not a loud noise, but definitely something new growing in the distance. It doesn't sound like mother, but it does sound like... Father, we have to go. Are you certain? Y yes, I think I hear little brother coming towards us. His footsteps are usually pretty quiet, but his legs... He makes a small, whirling sound as he walks. I think I can hear it. I've downloaded enough for now. Unplug me and get going. Don't run, just walk as fast as you can manage. Yes, sir. I carefully remove father from the console and tuck him safely in my dress. Despite what he told me, I started running full speed down the hallway. I try to slow down, but the adrenaline is already too much for me to handle. The tightness in my chest is starting to rise again. When I run past the at atrium, I hear glass doors on the other side hiss open. If lights were on right now, I'd be able to see little brother through the windows. He's only a few feet. Oh, few feet. <laughs> He's only a few feet away from me, and the fear is already making my knees feel weak. I stumble as I turn towards the kitchen, and father nearly flies out of my hands. I leap forward to catch him, but the mo momentum carries me too far forward, and my shoulder slams into the wall. A flash of pain shoots up my arm and I accidentally land on a grunt. Aberration detected. Please identify immediately. A strange, hollow voice echoes through the hall as the atrium doors on the side slide open. It sounds like little brother, but devoid of even the artificial kindness he usually speaks with. I ran into the kitchen and skid to a stop at the table. My body feels like it's on fire. My muscles tighten with each breath. If I keep going, my heart rate is, cer is certain to trigger the alarm. How strong are the caretaker's sensors? If I try to hide, will little brother still find me? My mind is a jumble as I try to formulate an escape route. I could try to make it back to my bedroom, but... I I'd have to run as fast as I can just to make it in time. I could try to hide in the playroom. It's closer, and I saw the door was open. The table in there might be big enough for me to hide under. I look around the kitchen. The table in front of me is a solid slab of metal. There's no space to hide underneath. Am I too big now to hide in the cabinets? Little brother is getting closer. I have to make a decision now. I can't get caught now. Not after I've come this far. I feel like two of these choices is a fuck up. Probably. I think running to the bedroom is a bad idea because it's probably really far. And the robot's probably faster than me. Yeah. And she did say that the cabinets would be too big, didn't she, earlier? I think that was just like a. Uh... Oh god, it's my head. You see, we're hitting this problem where my sleep schedule has been super fucked lately. Oh no. So I'm like half asleep right now, unfortunately. The the game is wonderful. I'm yeah. just crashed. Ah. Uh, I'm torn between uh, two and three. Uh, I'd say... Hide in the kitchen. Alright. 
There must be somewhere in this kitchen for me to hide. I fling open a few of the cupboards, but none of them are remotely big enough for me to fit. I check the main table in the center of the kitchen, but it's a solid hunk of metal, and the chute in the center is sealed tight. The table itself is tall enough for me to duck behind it, but the second little brother walks around, he'll see me for sure. I see a blue glow of a little brother's screen lighting up the hallways. God damn it. Uh. Always. My better judgment gives out. I squat down on the floor, keeping the table to between me and him. I try to get my breathing under control, nice and slow, just like father told me. Press my back against the cold me metal table and wait for what comes next. I focus on the approaching sound of metal feet. Little brother just walked around the doorway and is only a few feet away from me. There's a there's a chance to make this work. I just have to crawl around the table the opposite direction of little brother. I can hear him getting closer and I get ready to crawl on my hands and knees. He pulls on the opposite side of the table, not moving anymore. How strong are his sensors? Does he already know where I am? As I wait, I do my best to slow down my breathing. I can't let my heart rate get any faster than it, it already is. Little brother starts moving again, heading counterclockwise around the kitchen table. Very slowly, I begin moving myself away from him, trying to match his pace. The blue glow from his screens lights up the floor, and the walls growing brighter and the closer he gets. I have to move away from the table a bit to crawl around the stools since they are bolted to the floor. My dress threatens to get caught on, on the legs, but with a quick tug, it comes free. I realize that I'm not going fast enough for a, hor for a horrifying moment. I actually see little brother's silver body coming around the bend of the table. I scramble away just as he faces face swings in my direction. I can see his blue glow illuminating the spot where I had been sitting just a second ago. Little brother keeps moving, exiting the kitchen through the opposite door towards my bedroom. What if he checks to see if I am still in bed? I take a moment to calm myself down, sitting there on the cold tile floor of the kitchen. I nearly start crying. Get it together, Forth. You're only a short distance from your bedroom. You can do this. Wait a minute. I wait a moment to make sure little brother is gone, then dash down the hallway to my bedroom. The door slides shut behind me as I dive face first into my bed. I grab my pillow and scream into it with all my remaining strength. I cannot believe that actually worked. I broke out of my bedroom, wandered around in restricted areas, and hid from a caretaker. The guilt and fear should be overwhelming at this point, so why do I feel so... good? I got away with something, and I couldn't be happier. Are you alone? Yeah, I got away from little brother. Brilliant. We got the data we needed and managed to get back before anyone noticed. You are fantastic tonight, Forth. Or you were fantastic tonight, Forth. Mm hmm. What'd you say? After you said fourth, you just cut off. Oh, god damn it. Friggin' Discord. You were fantastic tonight, fourth. I want you to know that none of this could have happened without you. You really mean that, sir? Oh, god damn it, wrong button. Of course. Get some rest now. I'll go over what I downloaded tonight, and and we can start the next step when you wake up. That's that's good. I can live with that. One step at a time. Together we can do this. Yeah, we can, can't we? Go to sleep, Forth. I'll handle the boring part by myself. I take a moment to calm down, and when I'm feeling ready, I change into my pajamas. I hide father under my mattress just in case one of the caretakers comes back in while I'm sleeping. I have to keep him safe. 
With the adrenaline leaving my system, I collapse back onto the bed and drift off into the welcoming arms of sleep. My dream feels a little different tonight. I can't tell if it's better or worse. It's just different. I can see my lake, but there's something new in the air. A scent that I can't exactly place. Is it sweet? Salty? There's a very distant presence somewhere in my dream, almost like they are standing right behind me, moving out of the way whenever I turn around. It, it almost feels like another person. I can't fully tell if they are a stranger or an old friend. Did I ever want to share my dream with anyone else? Maybe I was just being selfish, wanting the lake all to myself. Is that what a good person would do? I try to open my mouth to talk, but my voice is gone. I can feel a stabbing pain in my throat, and the skin on the inside of my mouth is so dry that it is beginning to crack. The sky starts to overtake the water and I realize too late that I am falling onto my back looking up at, it, at an indifferent night sky. I've never had something like that happen inside my father's... In, it's inside my father. <laughs> I've never had something like that happen inside my dreams before. It didn't turn into a nightmare, or at the very least, it didn't frighten me much. It just felt different. Maybe different is good. My whole life has been a repetitive sequence of meaningless busy work. Father is different, even if he might get me in more trouble than I've never ever been in before. I haven't given any serious thought to what might happen if Mother finds out about Father. Will she kill him again? Will she kill me? first alarm sounds and my eyes shoot open. I shake off the lingering grass of sleep and force myself out of bed. I fell asleep with my day clothes on, but I still rush through the morning check. Flip my whole mattress over as I retrieve father from his hiding spot. His screen flickers on and I hear a soft crackle of his speaker comes to life. Good morning, father. With a full night's sleep behind me, I'm excited to tackle the next step of our escape plan. Uh, catch it? Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Forth. You'll take a... Your caretaker will be arriving soon to collect you, correct? Yes, I have two more alarms before little brother shows up. Then I'll be quick. The second step of the plan is easy. We have to build a bomb. <laughs> Wait, oh. what? I'm sorry, what? It doesn't exactly sound easy, sir. No, you got to trust me. This is going to be easy. Oh, while yawning, that sounded almost Italian. <laughs> oh, mommy, yeah, you get, you just got to trust me. It's going to be easy. Oh my so God. Why do we need a bomb? Are we going to to hurt someone with it? Not at all. We're going to use it to activate the escape pods. To make a very long story short, I went through all the blue hoods I downloaded last night. The locks of the escape pod can be disabled in the event of an emergency. To create that emergency, we're going to build a small explosive and set it off inside the air filtration system in on a lower level. It won't actually do any damage, since there are multiple air filters on each level, but the smoke will be enough to trick the system into thinking something way worse happened. The escape pods will unlock, and you'll be... You'll be able to 
get out of here. These pods should have enough fuel and food to reach go up my brain. To reach somewhere safe. <laughs> Ray, Ray, Ray Rabbits, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Gods, I hate how suddenly tired I am. Oh no. I've just been like this lately. Fair. That's fair. Does that sound reasonable to you? Uh, I guess. I'm just stuck on the whole building a bomb pot. So this plan... Hmm. So this plan has two parts, and both involve the least secure character caretaker on the station, Auntie. How is Auntie gonna help us build a bomb? I checked your medical records, and it's your birthday today, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, first off, happy birthday! Thank you. Auntie will be serving you cake today. The programmed routine will involve lighting a candle for you to blow out. Yeah, I remember that now. It's my favorite part of the whole day. The cake itself has never been all that tasty. I think she just makes it out of... The second alarm goes off and lights return on in my bedroom. I have about five minutes until little brother arrives. The candle is what's important. You'll have to find some way to smuggle the candle out of the kitchen. We need the candle to delay the explosion. As it burns, it will buy you time to get away before the bomb goes off. I still feel like we haven't gotten around to the actual crux of, the, of this issue. Just hold on for a second, I'm getting there. I've checked the fire. Pharmaceutical letters. <laughs> and each night, Mother injects you with a drug called Pactosilvine. Pactosilvine. It can be very reactive if mixed with the correct chemicals and allowed to ferment overnight. All you have to do is get it and bring it back to your bedroom. And I'll handle the rest. But how am I supposed to bring it here if Mother injects me with it? Is it... Is uh, it obvious? Is it obvious? Have her inject it into something else and bring that instead. Her medical senses don't inject unless she detects the muscle in your arm. I think we can trick her senses with a different source of meat. Auntie serves you meat for dinner, right? Yeah, she does. I think I see where this is going. Grab a handful of that meat, bring it with you to your evening checkup. Maybe you could wrap it up in something so the Hactyl Sylvan won't leak out as fast. Hold it over your arm as you get the injection, and Mother will assume that she administered the drug as normal. I have some fabric and some string that I tore from my dress. I could wrap the meat up in that. That's all I have to do for now. Do you understand what you need to do? Steal the candle, use the meat to trick mother. You've got to be careful today. The candle is requested. Is registered as a flammable object by your caretakers. 
They won't just let you take it from them. Auntie's programming requires her to take the candle back as soon as you finish your gig. I fear something. I fear out something. You can count on me. Oh, and one more thing. Father's screen blinks a different color and a tiny hologram is projected out from his screen. Hatchet. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Just in case you get lost, I uploaded all the blueprints I could find into one map. It will only show the area of the station you are currently in, but it's better than nothing, especially once we start exploring new areas of the station together. Push your thumb to my screen and it will turn on the holographic map. Push it again and it will be activated. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, your screen does feel cool to touch. Okay then, you have, have your mission for today. Get the candle, get the drug, and don't get caught. You can count on me, sir. Wonderful. About all else, keep yourself safe. If something feels too risky, just let it go. You can always try another way. Thank you, sir. I can do this. Last night, Father was able to access his files, and none of my caretakers even noticed. I think I've earned a little bit of confidence. Third alarm rings, and I can hear little brother right outside my door. I kind of want to look at that. Oh... Hey. Emergency Fancy. lift. Okay, supply pod, medical bay, association pod, number four quarters, rec room, saw cleaner pod, admin station, repair pod, atrium. Okay. Oh, fourth, my darling sister, guess what time it is? I'll be right there, little brother. I can't risk the caretakers noticing me. And I need to conserve my battery power. Battery whenever I can. I'm going to go into low power mode until you need me. Understood, sir. Good luck, Borf. While their screen goes dark and I am once again alone. What do I do now? If I leave him in my room, he might be gone by the time I get back tonight, little brother or big sister could find him and take him back to mother. But would it be any safer to bring him with me? I could hide him in my dress, and I always know where he is. But what if I dropped him in front of, the, of my caretakers? What if their sensors can pick him up? Either option feels like the wrong option. I can hear my bedroom door unlocking, so I have to act fast. Hmm, what do you think? I mean, he is also on map, so I would say keep father with me. Yeah. It's not safe to leave him behind. I know that little brother sometimes cleans my room while I'm gone. I've never seen him do it, but my bedroom always seems to be sparkly clean. He's my only lifeline right now. I need to keep him safe and keep him close. I took my father into my dress right as little brother enters with his usual cheerful bravado. Good morning, my little incredible sister. Oh, it is me, your little brother. Wait, that was more Russian than I needed it to be. <laughs> Good morning, uh, little brother. How are you this morning? I'm just peachy. Now that I get to see you, Fourth, are you ready for another fun-filled day of safe recreational activities? 
Hey, little brother, about yesterday. I started to look at his cheerful face and remember the horrible things I said to him after dinner. Even now, I still feel guilty. What I said to you before bedtime, calling you stupid. I shouldn't have said that. I was just angry that I... What do you mean, Fork? I have no memory of this incident. But what? You remember what I said, right? After my check-in with Mother, I snapped at you, called you stupid, and left. And you left the room? It was really rude of me, and I know you were just trying. Fork, I apologize for interrupting you, but I can assure you that this event never occurred. The robot's fucking gaslighting you. <laughs> no, it did happen. I remember every moment of it. How can he lie to me like that? Did Mother wipe his memory somehow? There is no way that I could have imagined that. I just reround my memory of your bedtime last night. And we had a perfectly pleasant conversation about your birthday. You certainly are acting silly, my dear four. So, you really don't remember me losing my temper? No, not at all, my dear four. It is a common side effect of your memories to some... For your memories to sometimes return to you out of order. I'm certain you're remembering a similar event from long ago. Uh, if you say so, little brother. I am certain that I yelled at little brother last night. Why would he try to lie about something so obvious? Or am I actually mixing up the events in my mind? I didn't hallucinate about the events of last night. I'm certain of that. I have to touch the spot on my dress where father is tucked away, just to reassure myself that he is physically there. Mother had to have messed with little brother's memory, or perhaps he, she just scared him into lying. This birthday is off to a weird start. After an uninspiring breakfast, little brother takes me back to the playroom. He doesn't even give me a choice today, politely informing me that I am restricted to quiet drawing time for the next few four hours. To absolutely no one's surprise, there are no new activities in the playroom today. Father didn't approve any of little brother's suggestions, and so nothing has really changed. At, at least the table and the chairs were replaced, even after I broke everything in here, mother has must have taken even pity on me to put everything back in here. Little brother g gives me a peppy little goodbye and goes charge in the hallway outside. I sit at my table and mindlessly scribble all over the paper little brother has printed for me today. I just draw big red swirls over and over again, not bothering to put any effort into it. I am too busy thinking about the next stage of the escape have to get the candle away from Auntie. It sounds deceptively simple, but there is, is going to be some weird quirk in her programming that will stop me. What do I know for certain about the candle? It's made out of the same crumbly wax as the crayons I'm drawing with. It's, it's so weak it falls apart if you squeeze too hard and it tastes like old pasta noodles. Come to think of it, I think that party cake is also just mushed up pasta in the shape of a cake. Auntie really does get a lot of use out of her permitted materials. Too much use if I'm being honest. Maybe I could switch the candle out with a crayon or even part of the cake itself. Not sure how Auntie keeps track of where the candle is. Father said that my characters don't actually see anything in the rooms around them, just heat and motion. Is there any way I can fool them into ignoring the candle? I could try and create a distraction, maybe knock over the plate and stuff the candle in my dress while the characters try to clean it up. I could even throw the candle out of the room, leaving nothing for them to put back. For a minute, I considered just asking for the candle. I could try to convince my characters that I want it for my birthday request. It isn't likely, but it is better than nothing. 
after I had played out the scene logically in my head. Auntie will place the candle on my cake, light it with one of her heating nodes, and wait for me to blow it out. I can remove the candle at the cake at that point, and Auntie won't take it back until I'm done eating the cake. So that's the time frame I have to steal the candle after I blow it out, but before the cake is gone, the longer I take to eat the cake, the more time I have to come up with a plan. Just in case, I hid an extra a few extra crowns in my dress. Even if I don't end up using them, it's better to keep the, my options open. Can I hatch it? Hatch it? Uh, hatchet you there? Did you have a good a good time in the playroom? Yeah, little brother. I am having a good time right now. Huh. You are being too silly today. Or, I hope you took your time and digested my breakfast like a good little girl. Yeah, like Ray Rapids said. Ray Rapids, oh, yeah. How much? How much longer is the is the demo? I feel like we're probably close to the end by now. Yeah. I feel like it was a bit ago that Ray Reynolds said we were like halfway through it. Yeah, cause I'm I'm fading fast. Today's been a really busy and tiresome day for me. Yeah. Then I just load up one of the other games I have, play that, and then probably in stream and stream the rest of the demo tomorrow. So far, I I believe we're both enjoying this. Like this game is really good. Oh yeah, like this this is very enjoyable. I'm looking forward to when we have the finished product on the oh, table yeah. so that we can go through it again and this time I won't sleep like <laughs> ha be half asleep through a what seems to be a pretty important section. Yeah. Very yeah. sure. Did I say yeah, yep. Yeah, like, like I said, I I apologize. I I'm just so freaking tired. Preference Did you me. notice who's hiding in the foremost numbers? Oh yeah, mother. Oh, I didn't see that at first. Yep. She's here. She's going to stick you. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, bus watching. This is this is great. Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, very very glad you enjoyed it. And I guess the stream's not technically over. Bright's gonna be streaming some other stuff, but yeah, I'm I suppose yeah. Uh, same time tomorrow. Go yep. up and yeah, we'll finish the last hour or so. Yeah, same time tomorrow at 9 p.m. EST. We'll finish it. Yeah, and it was very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. chatting with you. Ray Rapids. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, very high regards for for the game. Oh yeah. Very high, very high regards. Been more than I could have ever expected. <laughs> yeah. But either way, yeah. I'm. Okay. I'm gonna fucking hop off. All right. Have a good night, everyone. And yeah. I guess see you tomorrow. Yeah. Good night, Hatchet. Alright. So let me get the next game up. That'll be the final game tonight. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? There it is.
God damn it, my fucking keyboard. Oh, there it goes. God damn it. Where is the right Give me a moment while I fix the sound settings and everything. Dear God, this thing's loud. Too loud. I mean, it doesn't seem too loud for me. Okay. Jesus Christ, that thing was blasting. But yeah, the next game we'll be playing is Let's Find Larry. And Rare Reference, if you're still here, I, I can't wait for the full release. I literally can't wait. My name is Findo. I love finding people. It's fun. Let me introduce you to some of, of the controls. Go ahead and press A or D on your keyboard. Wow, you just made the whole world spin. I feel like I'm gonna hurl. Awesome. Rotating is great for finding a new perspective to look from. Only one more thing. One sec. Hey, down here. It's me. It must be pretty tough to see me from all the way up there. Press the right mouse button to zoom in. Now click on the left mouse button. Wow! You're a natural. Well... You're- oh shit. Click on the big ol' arrow in the corner and have fun. Wait, I- I clicked it. There we go. Oh, okay. I actually held click. Oh, hey there. What a beautiful day. I went to go take a walk in the park. And then I saw him. I never forgot his face. My best friend from high school. Larry! He's the talk of the town. We haven't seen each other in years. It's great to see you, Larry. You found Larry. Fuck yeah. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Some of you are terrified. Oh, there you are. You found Larry. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? I guess so. Oh, I see him. You found Larry. Okay. So when is this actually going to get horrifying? That's the real question. Oh, I see him. 
Hi there. You found Larry. Too easy. Oh. That wasn't hard at all. You found Larry. Oh. I guess he doesn't want me finding him. Well, too bad. I'm the ultimate seeker. You found Larry. Okay, seriously, when is this actually going to get scary? Or something. Oh, hey, there it is. You found Larry. Are, are you following me? Okay, now it's getting a lot harder. Okay, where the hell are you, bud? Nope. Wait, is that him down there? No, it's not him. Be around here somewhere. Oh, there you are. You found Larry. Took me a little bit, but I found you, your fucking ass. Oh, great. Now it's gonna be a lot harder. I'm so far overhead. Oh, wait. I see you. Um. Excuse me? I, 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 excuse me? Willie Mac. Who the fuck's Willie Mac? I'm spam clicking. I am I supposed to find something? Maybe I'm supposed to look from this side. Ah, you found Larry. Larry looks terrified. I. Also freaked out by what I witnessed. I, I wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the fuck is that thing up there? Where's that fucker? Nope. 
Wrong face. Where are you, Larry? It's time for your anal rectum exam. I'm obviously not there. I'm actually kind of confused. Where the fuck is this fucker? Oh, I see him. I see that fucker. Little sneaky ass bastard. You found Larry. Hey, quit it. No, fuck you. I do what I want. Oh. You found Larry. Stop following me or I'll cut a fuzz. I work with a fuzz. <laughs> You found Larry. Help! Somebody! Stalker! <laughs> hmm. I don't see him over here. Oh, there he is. You found Larry. Please! Larry. Fuck yeah. Okay, so far I don't see Larry. Just want to call about your car's extended warranty. No, seriously, where the fuck is this fucker? I will find him if I die. Well, if I even have to die, I shouldn't have said that. If I die, <laughs> that well, that means I have to die in order to find him. Fuck. Oh, I see him. You found a little shit. Okay, so he, well, he can't hide in the things anymore. Thankfully. Okay. 
I want to see him. Boom. You found Larry. <laughs> I keep finding your ass. Oh, I can't move. Oh. Oh. You found Larry. Oh, God. You don't have any idea what you're doing. Are you with them? Oh, God. Leave me alone. Oh. Yeah, I don't feel bad. I don't give a shit. I'm being paid to find him. You found Larry. Oh, fuck me. Got you, motherfucker. Larry. There he is. You found Larry. You have nowhere to run, motherfucker. You found Larry. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. you how are you are you staring at me or are you staring over there I'm very much confused hey 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 fuck off my fucking uh magnifying glass you motherfucker Thank you. Jesus Christ! Who the fuck are you? Can I help you? I, I need to be able to see to find Larry. Notice you've been keeping a close eye on somebody. We like find a babe of food. Recognize this rat? Nice guy, Larry. Once again, the popular local M Middlewood resident being honored for uh, honoring the mayor for his several acts of kindness. Read about it more on page 12, uh, 2, not 12. I know he's close. I can smell him. He would like a little wood. We would like a little wood with him. He, he's a slippery sob. Proving to be difficult to drag down. But you seem to be doing just fine. I'm not somebody you want to upset. Stay on his tail. 
if you know what's good for you. You'll lead us right. <laughs> Larry isn't here. Oh, I just saw him. Okay. Wait, why do I get the feeling he's at a trash can by himself somewhere? That's a very sleazy- Okay, wait a minute. This trash can seems sus. Oh. Do we not get our own trash cans? Oh, there we go. Oh shit, a strip club. With a bunch of potholes in front of it. Oh, yeah, I found you, motherfucker. I found your way, yes. I don't give a shit if you're crying. You saw them, didn't you? Listen, they, they took my family. They took them. I don't know what they've done. And now, they're coming for me. They're relentless. Anywhere I go, they always find me. They never stop. No, no. No, no, no. There's no escape. Help me, please. Gonna die. <laughs> they are here. Please. Oh dear God. Uh, what? Oh. Point that point that was hard. Do it now. I I would if you let go of my goddamn glass. No, he ain't at the porn club. He's right fucking you there. Found Larry. Oh dear fucking god. You found Larry. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! <laughs> Why is there blood? Why is there blood on the floor? Oh, there you are. You found Larry. Oh God! Larry. Yeah, and he's running further into the woods. Oh, there he is. See you, bitch. You found Larry. You can't hide forever, motherfucker. Oh, that was easy. Good job. The fool has ran into the building up ahead. We got him trapped on the rooftop. This is the night, boys. You'll be able to get a nice clean shot from on him from up there. Take this. You found 50 caliber sniper rifle. Oh hell yes! I'm about to blow a cap in his ass. 
Well, mainly in his head. Oh, great. You're not... You're not gonna stay still for me, are you? Boom, bitch! <laughs> Got no scope, motherfucker. I can't move it. I can't move it. Oh, there you are. Hi, Larry. Oh. You, you bastard. Oh. Well, he's dead. And that's one, kid. You don't know how long we've been after this motherfucker. We got you trapped now. No escape. You've been hunting for long enough. I dedicated half of my life to hunting you down. Time's up. Willie Mac. Oh. But I'm just late. Cut the shit. Take it off. You son of a bitch. When I heard the fuzz caught you, put a bullet through your sick skull. I'm spam clicking. I'm... Spam clicking. Oh, I can't kill him. Oh, well, he's got him. Oh, you are a terrible shot. Oh, so why are none of your friends even helping? Oh, dear God. You're dead. you go, motherfucker. I still got my 50 count, motherfucker. Oh, wait, what? Oh, my God. That's Larry's face. Oh, God. You couldn't just leave me alone, could ya? Larry, Larry, it's me, your friend from high school. <laughs> I thought I had a good thing going until you came along and ruined everything. Looks like I need a new place to hide. <laughs> I wonder if you scream as much as he did. <laughs> You ain't gonna catch my ass. Jesus fucking Christ. Distressing news coming from the quiet town of Middlewood this morning. Where a dismembered body of a man was discovered today in Middlewood Park. The police cordoned off the park and discovered trash bags that had been buried underground. Oh. Trash bags containing severed body parts. Damn. Attempts to identify the body have proven difficult, as the authorities state that the face of the man had been removed. The police are asking for anyone to step forward with any information, or anyone who might have seen or heard anything in Middlewood Park between the hours of 8 a.m., at 9 a.m. It's 1 a.m. Not 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. The extreme graphic nature of this crime bears an uncanny resemblance to the Willie Mack murders that haunted the town for many years. I see. 
Willie Mack, notorious for the murder and mutilation of 17 people between 1996 and 1999. Some of the most graphic of the murders committed in the town of Nettlewood. In the year 2001, he was apprehended and sentenced to life in prison. Damn. Although, only last year, Mr. Mack was presumed dead when a prisoner transport vehicle relocating him crashed and burst into flames. He's alive. The Middlewood police will be issuing a statement shortly. But for now, we go over to Tom for the weather. Take it away, Tom. I fucking hate this job. Oh. <laughs> uh, Tom? Oh, yes. Thanks, Derry. It's gonna be a beautiful day, folks. Sunny spells all around. I get it. I I was Tom, and he took my face. I get it. That's clever. I, I, I find that really funny, too. Wait, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck was that? Well, anyways. Danger Noodles, I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you guys next time on your next mission. Uh, we're finishing an awesome demo of, uh, made by Ray Rapids called, uh, shit. Let me find, make sure I don't say things wrong. Mother's Favorite. It, it's a really good game so far. You guys should definitely go check it out on Itch.io. And, um, I hope to see you guys in your next mission. And, um, butt bagels. <laughs>